thank you so much. And what an amazing, uh, the singing was amazing. So I'm sorry that I had to stop that. <laughs> but I thank you for having me. I'm, my name is Carrie Jo Lawrence. I am from the Mandan Hadatsa Rikara Nation in North Dakota. And I, was, I want to acknowledge uh, my mother's tribe. She's from the Standing Rock Nation in North Dakota. And uh, thank you. And how fitting to talk about food sovereignty right after lunch and our opportunities in our tribal nations. Food and agriculture have the potential to be the most restorative industry serving tribal nations to reestablish culturally significant foodways and bring native people out of states of poverty that have afflicted us since the arrival of Europeans. We are getting back to our ways of producing the foods that we want to eat and producing them in our regenerative ways. For too long, native producers, communities, tribes, and regions have not had the inf infrastructure necessary to create a resilient and thriving regional food system. A regional food system grounded in native culture that provides economic opportunities and diversification for tribes and producers to feed their communities is necessary. COVID-19 has made perfectly clear that feeding our people is one of the, the most essential functions of our societies and requires a new solution, particularly as we recover to rebuild post COVID-19. There are substantial missing links in the tribal food system that create deep gaps in food security that are detrimental to Native people and the communities in which we live. Because tribal governments and the communities they serve are essential to the national rural prosperity, those missing links can be overlooked no longer. The federal government spends billions of dollars on United States Department of Agriculture's nutrition programs to, fade, to feed Need it <laughs> to feed Native people as part of their trust responsibility to tribes. While these programs attempt to feed our people, they do not fully support the nutritional needs of tribal communities and bypass the very Native farmers and ranchers who produce the food within the communities. Our tribal nations do not have the tax base nor the dedicated capital for building the infrastructure necessary to harness the potential of our food systems. The impacts of a robust food and agriculture sector would create jobs in rural tribal communities, feed native people more nutritious food, and allow the federal government to spend less money on nutrition programs in the long term. Regional food and agriculture infrastructure in Indian country would create new opportunities that would strengthen the food system, resilience, it would support healthier and more nutritious foods, provide enhanced job security, and create more jobs. Regional food hubs would feature meat processing facilities, fruits, vegetables, and grain processing facilities. We would have processing facilities for poultry, egg, and dairy, warehouses, and storage for perishables. We would have logistics and distribution infrastructure to support regional food economies to allow food to reach the people that need it. And, and then we'd have the finance and credit services for native producers. Indian country needs the financial infrastructure to bring native culture into its next chapter. Access to capital is the most pressing issue for native farmers and ranchers, and the success of regionalizing food is contingent on a lead lending structure that works in Indian country. <clears throat> this financial infrastructure will ensure that native producers have the capital necessary to run their operations so they can produce for the hubs. Financing food systems in Indian country with federal support will require capital access resources through a combination of Department of Treasury capital to native CDFIs, those are the community development finance institutions that my colleague Tommy talked about earlier. USDA lending authorities, Department of Commerce lending authorities, as well as guaranteed lending authorities provided by a variety of federal departments. 
The current lending programs at the, the United States Department of Agriculture, Farm Service Agency, and Rural Development are inadequate to meet the current needs. The federal government must also provide additional support through the farm credit system lending institution for specialized capital access cap capacity within the specialized agriculture and rural infrastructure lender. The farm credit system, the na nation's premier specialized agriculture and rural infrastructure lending source, is essential to the support of Indian country's food and agriculture infrastructure vision. The federal government must provide for a one-time capitalization of at least one self-insurance risk pool to provide the necessary agriculture business insurance and crop insurance products tailored to native agriculture and food systems. The solution to this problem is to utilize a combination of funding sources, public, private, and philanthropic that creates a sustainable investment or patient capital, as we like to call it, approach. This would preserve the potential for growth within individual operations and agriculture hub infrastructure. In, a, in addition, this must be coupled with an approach for a wraparound technical support and intertribal cooperative approaches <clears throat> to management that will ground the agriculture businesses within a safety net that will preserve the opportunity for sustained growth. Young adult leader engagement is an integral part of the structure of native food hubs. Native youth need exposure to all facets of food and agriculture, including business, policy, and health, and well, as well as an understanding of all stages within the food supply, food supply chain. Traditional employment opportunities, in addition to internships, mentorships, apprenticeships, are important functions of youth involvement with the regional food hubs. Partnerships with local and regional trade and technical schools, community colleges, tribal colleges and universities, and graduate institutions of higher learning will offer a wide variety of practical skills, training activities. Preparing the next generation of agriculturalists for success is critically important and should be coordinated with each regional food hub with a variety of partners appropriate in that region. Supporting individual native food entrepreneurship is vital for the success of the larger native food system. Not only do native entrepreneurs need to support, need support in critical areas such as business management, marketing techniques, risk management, and food safety, they need access to financing and the facilities to support their individual food entrepreneurship efforts. Food entrepreneurs need greater access to lucrative federal government contracts, such as the over $1.1 billion spent annually by civilian agencies on food products. Some of the critical efforts to support food entrepreneurs are small business loans for native food entrepreneurs, federal coordination of native food entrepreneurships, expansion of federal contracting authorities for food products, enhancement of opportunities for value-added food product development, preferences for native food product purchasing within all federal departments and agencies. No new appropriations would be needed to support native food entrepreneurs. We recommend that all federal contracting and purchasing authorities be examined and up to 20% set aside within program purchasing should be allocated to native owned entities supported by regional hubs. Not only is this important for Indian country, but is also important for the national food security. Indian country's food producers have played an important and invisible role in America's food security. By reimagining and strengthening native food systems now, we will ensure that this role is fully realized. And as we move into the future, the time for revitalizing our native food economies is now. Food should be in the middle of the climate and economic discussion. All of those things are directly connected and go hand in hand. Climate is the same as food. We need them both to have a just and healthy society. Indian lands and the native people 
who work them are critical for a success in fighting climate change. Any climate response must include tribes, tribal communities, and native producers, not only as valued partners, but as sovereign governments and large landowners. Native conservation and agricultural practices are already leading climate smart practices and have been since millennium. Federal law and programs should recognize that the inherent value of traditional ecological knowledge with over 59 million acres of native operated farms across the United States, tribal nations and tribal producers play a critical role in addressing climate change. The time for change is now. Thank you for your time.